And what pisses me off is these headlines are like, Remy Bader gets real about the drug. She's not getting real. This is not facts. This is her disorder. This is her disordered eating and her victim narrative masquerading as an immutable truth that this drug will make you worse off once you get on it. Because that's what happened to her. Because as she herself said, she decided that's what she was going to do. I don't hear in anything in her interview that she got any psychological help for her binge eating disorder. And I think it's very interesting to note that this woman's entire brand is kind of being fat. Kind of. I mean, her podcast is called Not Skinny But Not Fat. Her TikTok is like realistic clothing hauls, inclusive sizes. Now all she wants to talk about is Ozempic and how it didn't work for her. Is she incentivized to have this work for her? Is she incentivized to be thin? Does this fit into the narrative she has come up for herself? Is her brand anything other than that her body, which is not that thin? I have a lot more to say than, oh, I'm thin. Here's my good body. I'm fat. I hate, I don't like feeling like this. That's not my brand. It's, it's part of me as a human being. So I share it with you guys because that's what we do here. We share what we're going through, but that's not, that's not my channel. That's not my brand. So me being fat or thin doesn't move the needle in terms of my content either way. Her, it's different. The, like the psychology that she has so much, I guess you could call it entanglement with like her, her career and her persona and her body, it's very, very unhealthy. And you can see that it's unhealthy because it skews instantaneously into a victim narrative, instantaneously. You know, people are like, oh, praise her, she's so honest. She's a victim narrative, again, masquerades as honesty. They're just sharing their truth. No, they're sharing their version. They're sharing their narrative because they have a specific emotional reaction they want from people because they need to fill up something inside. How do we know she needs to fill up something inside? The binge eating. Again, I've been there, you've been there. Like most of us know what that feels like. We also know how bad it sucks. And if you get sick of feeling like that, you take steps to correct it. She didn't. She took a step, which is Ozempic, hoping that this was just gonna like be a magic bullet. Not always the way it goes. I don't know if she took any psychological steps. My victim narrative is that I'm very bad at math and science and anything technical. I can't put together a bookshelf. I can't figure out how to change my oil. I just can't, I can't do that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a smart person, but I don't have that type of intelligence. That's what I tell myself. That's what I tell other people. I'm signing up for flight school. I'm starting flying lessons because I would like to see if I can get my pilot's license. And my victim narrative, I've had to become very aware of it because I've already told myself, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do this. You're not smart enough, Shallon. You don't have this type of intelligence. You can write a cute story about this. You can do a fun video about it. I don't think you can actually do it. And then I'm like, okay, well, what's my payout here? Why is this a good thing? Well, because then I don't have to stick with things because I was just doomed to fail. There's no way. Why stick it out? because I was never gonna make it. So why run 26 miles if you know you're not gonna make it 26.2? Quit at mile one, right? And then I don't feel like a failure. It was just predetermined. I'm just the girl who can't fly a plane. And it's tough. It's tough because the thing with the victim narrative is it's not always wrong. It's not always wrong. Sometimes we can be perfectly aware and, you know, acute and discerning about guys and they will still cheat on you and you will not see it coming. You can try your hardest at a job and they're going to tell you we want to promote you and they will still hold you down. And you can study as much as you want for that flight exam and you might still fail. So it's very difficult to run up against a victim narrative when sometimes <sighs> it's proving you right and you feel victimized by it. It's difficult, I get it. But if we can be aware, then if we do have those victim points, we fail, there's a cheat, we get held down, we don't pass the test, whatever. It's not, well, of course, it's, well, fuck, man. This is an outlier. Because what makes it an outlier versus par for the course, the norm, is our refusal to assume that it's par for the course. 
and our refusal to accept or believe that's what I deserve. Of course, I'm going to be fat. Of course, I'm going to be cheated on. Of course, I'm going to be in this dead end job for, of course. <laughs> if we fundamentally don't believe that, listen, we can't always control the outcomes in the world. We get, you know, but we are orienting everything away from that outcome. And we're trying our hardest. That's the difference. So right now, I want to go back in time to a few days ago because I'm not done talking about this, this drug. I'm not done talking about this because, again, I hate a victim narrative. And y'all know I am not some like big pharma apologist. I did not get the vaccine. I try to be as drug free as, and holistic as possible. But I'm also a lazy entitled rich bitch. So here we are. And I use the drug that lazy entitled rich bitches are using. But as I will tell you in this video, I have my medical reasons, you know. I worked with a very reputable doctor, blah, 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 blah. You can come for me in the comments if you want. I'm happy and I'm thin and I'm healthy and my blood sugar's regulated. Die mad about it, whatever. Content creator and model, Remy Bader from Not Skinny, Not Fat, is bitching about Ozempic because first of all, it's too easy to get. Second of all, she didn't lose weight on it. And third of all, she gained back double what she lost. Can you pick a lane here? If it's so easy to get, why the hell did you get it? You got it. So, and you're, you're literally, your brand title is not skinny, but not fat. And you're mad people who are not skinny, but not fat got a weight loss drug. Did you think before you said any of these words? And it caused her to binge eat. That's not what a drug causes you to do, that's what your hands and your mouth cause you to do. That's what your own human decisions cause you to do. A drug can make you retain water. It can make you not metabolize insulin. It can fuck your metabolism up in general. It will not put food in your hand, put, put it from a shelf into a cart, from a menu to a plate, from a hand to a mouth. Drugs don't do that. I've got news for you. Your, your finger phalanges do that. Your mouth hole does that. And I feel like everybody who isn't losing weight on Ozempic is now slamming it as like, people shouldn't even have it. You're just pissed because you're not skinny. And you're not skinny because of your eating habits. I told you guys this in my Ozempic video. I've lost about 50 pounds. And yes, Ozempic, I mean, was a life changer. Not a game changer, a life changer. I was pre-diabetic. I have, I'm super, super hypoglycemic, so I don't process insulin well. It's just mayhem. But I also radically changed my eating habits. I don't drink, I don't eat sugar, and I don't eat dairy. So you cut out any one of those things, you're gonna see a lot of weight loss, drug or no drug. Now, and I ain't trying to say I did this on my own. I had the massive crutch in Ozempic. And someone's like, that's the, that's the lazy way of doing it. No shit, I do everything the lazy way. I've got extensions, lashes, nails, die mad about it, sorry. I did it the rich white bitch way because that's what I am. And I'm not gonna sit here and gaslight you and be like, I, it was positivity, it was yoga. No, it was a drug. Now I've like weaned myself, not off of it, but way down. And I'm hitting the gym three times a week with a trainer. I do Pilates another two times a week. I like, I am going for it. And people have speculated a lot that the Kardashians have lost weight on Ozempic. I personally would believe this, you know, and I think maybe they're mad they, they weren't like the first out of the gate. I would be, I'd be like, hello? Um, I know we share some people in common, medical providers, so I would not be surprised at all if, if they had lost weight like this. But you know what? Khloe Kardashian is shredded. Even if we were on the exact same amount of this drug, I don't have abs like that. I don't have those arms. I don't have the, those thighs. She is crushing it in the gym, okay? And again, a drug doesn't do that. Your own self-control does it. Just like your own lack of willpower will make you fat. Genetics, predisposition, blah, blah, blah. That'll, that'll give you the push you need into obesity. But at the end of the day, it's your choices. I was pudgy. I, I was not, I was pudgy. I was plump, festively plump because of what I was eating, alcohol, sugar, dairy. Now, somebody who didn't have the insulin issues I have maybe wouldn't have been that fat, but they still would have not looked great because my diet wasn't great and I wasn't working out in the right ways. So 
You can't credit and blame a drug for everything that's wrong in your life. I don't understand where we have decided to outsource any sort of human responsibility. Does that make you feel good? To say, I have no willpower, I have no self-control. And I'm not saying I don't understand the struggle of not being able to, to feeling like you're not able to control what goes in your mouth. Feeling is the thing. Of course you're able to. If you can't control what you eat, one of the most basic, fundamental things there is. You think you're an influencer? You can't even influence your hand going here with this motion. You can't influence your own self. Why on earth would you tell somebody that? Like, get that shit sorted out. The struggle is real, but so is the ability con to control it. You know, so I, I really, I am so sick of this ozempic backlash of like, it, save it for the people who need it. You, people don't have diabetes. First of all, you don't know what the fuck is going on with someone's A1C. I don't, I didn't, I wasn't morbidly obese, but my insulin was a disaster, disaster. You know, people don't even know what hypoglycemia is. Who cares? It just pisses me off that once again, you know, everyone has decided that their health is someone else's responsibility. And she can claim that she's not making that argument. Well, she is if she's pissed that a diet drug, diet drug didn't work for her and therefore no one else should have it. Pack up my toys and go, I know what you should have this. The reason she gained weight on it, or not on it, but didn't lose that much weight and then gain weight after, she ate through it. I know people who've eaten through gastric bypass, my cousin. She was fat when she went in there and when she came out, you can only eat like a, like a shot glass of food per day, right? Do you know where she chose to get that food? Taco Bell. I was with her, I watched it. She would get Taco Bell and she would eat too much. She would eat like half a burrito and throw it up in the parking lot. So guess who's fat again? She is. You know, there was no sense of, oh man, I, yeah, this, I need to go from here to here. This drug is going to take me from here to here. The rest is up to me. No, it was, I will go here. I will go to the pharmacy to get it. And then it's going to do all the work. Good luck out there, man. If that is your philosophy on anything in life, good luck out there. If that's your philosophy on love and relationships, I'm going to suck his dick once a week and he's going to be, he's going to do everything. He's going to pay all my bills. He's going to like, meh. And do we not see this in today's culture? I want to be an OnlyFans model. I want to be a cam girl. I want to be a sugar baby. You are lazy and likely not as hot as you think you are. Oh, you have a pussy? Oh my God. Wow. Two, two, two tits. That's incredible. We all have that, man. Come on. Come on. You want to do the minimum and get the maximum. I mean, in a way, of course, we all want that. We all want that. We all want to take that scratcher. We want to get that one promotion. Then suddenly we're CEO of the company. How is that working? When you look around at successful people, thin people, people in healthy, stable relationships, rich people, is that overall the vibe? I do almost nothing and I expect my staff, my husband, my drugs to do everything else to take me into success. And it works. I have never, ever heard that in any category from any human on the planet who I would want to emulate in any way. Not ever. So this is a bit of a long diatribe about this chick who like I've only tangentially heard of. I, I couldn't care less. But again, it's like, don't, don't come for the drug, come for your own behavior. Okay. Anyway. Okay. That wraps it up. I think I've bitched my way out. Uh, come back tomorrow because we're going to do the, the other part of that video that I had filmed, which is the best and worst celebrities I've interviewed. My Gwen Stefani story. It's not huge. I, ugh. And we're going to shred her weird I'm Japanese thing. I know it happened like a week ago, but it's still cringe. And this is maybe a good thing. What to do if you did something cringe that might be in your rear view, but you are still cringy about. How do you deal with it? How do you move on? What's the strategy? And like I said, join me in the Chalantrage. It's our wonderful little online community. So many bonus videos, so much bonus content, and some fun Valentine's Day stuff is coming your way. All right, I'll see you later, Shalligators.